I came to the chromatic from being a, di being a diatonic player. Um, but I like to play it in all all the keys. We're not going to do all the keys today. Um, so I'm going to start quite basic. I'm going to give you some couple of simple little tunes to do. Um, talk about different scales to use, some tricks with the slide. If you've got questions, pop them in the chat. Um, I expect you all to play along at home. Um, I want to see you all jamming away. Um, yeah, we'll do some blues in G, A, E, F. That will probably take up enough time. So, um, I'll be sharing stuff on the screen. Um, I think I sent out some of these sheets last time, so I could probably send them all to Sam and he can perhaps share them um afterwards but i'll put some stuff up um i'm gonna give you a really i'm gonna uh, give you a really simple tune to learn we'll play over a 12 bar blues and it's gonna go it's called blues backstage by count basic um let me put the music up for it and um it's pretty easy, so you should be able to get the hang of it. I've got loads of things open, so it might take me a while to find. Okay, that one. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. Yeah. So. I'm going to put a blues backing track on in the key of G. This is just going to repeat the repeated riff we play over this. So I'm going to start from the second stave down. My tab, you probably understand it, but this is blow seven. Blow five with the slide in, blow five, suck three with the slide in, blow three. So an arrow means slide in, circle means suck. So look, blow seven, blow five, slide in, blow five, suck three, slide in, blow three. Start again. Two, three, four. a bit with a blue scale. Rise of the Mixolydian scale. with a major pentatonic, I'll explain all these now. Thank you. 
Okay, going to stop that there. Um, we're going to go over these scales um, in a second and just about my sort of approach to playing blues, which you can do in a few different keys. So, um, again, do stop me if um, you don't know what I'm on about. So this is the real riff we played, which uses notes from the blues scale. Um, I'm going to put these blues scales up, the sort of scales that I'm using. Okay, sorry, one second. Can you see blues in G, blue, blues in G scales written up? Yeah, okay, I can see Mike's nodding there. Okay, so um, I started off, I improvised using that, the blue scale. Unsurprisingly, that's good for blues. Um, I use the Mixolydian scale. I use the major pentatonic scale. Um, and there's sort of, sort of a mix up of the major and the minor pentatonic scale here, which I didn't do, but we will do in a minute. So um, if we just try playing this scale. Okay, so that's the in this key, the G blues scale. So I think G is a really good key for the chromatic, for a C chromatic. Um, I'm not talking about playing other key chromatics. I know we get them. I don't know if anyone's got another key chromatic on them, but um, I'm just going to assume we've all got C chromatic. Obviously, some of this will apply to diatonics as well. So um, G is an easy key because it's very related to the key of C, the scale we've got on the harmonica. Um, so I don't think it's too hard to get around. It's um, as long as you sort of don't go radically off the, the scale, you, you're going to land on a correct note if you like. So, okay, that's the blues scale. Um, if you want to play. The C's are suck fours, which you might do. So put the slide in on a suck four and play that. Instead, that's fine. In fact, it might work better for you. So you experiment with the fingering, that's what I'm saying. Of the I do both according to what I'm playing, so obviously it's an advantage of the chromatic you've got these. Alternate ways you can play C's and F's, which we'll find out more later. But um, yeah, if you don't know the blue scale, you should memorize all 12 of them. <laughs> um, and these notes, the B flat, the C sharp here. So uh, slide in on seven, on straw three. Or seven. Or eleven. Then give us that minor third flat bluesy sound and uh, on the fives gives us a flat and fifths because of that bluesy sound so if i put this back in track on again we're just going to play out the blues scale and then do the mixolydian and then the major pentatonic and then we're going to do it sort of another tune so um perhaps if we just play the blues scale up and down a couple of times if you're familiar with it, you know it, just go for it and jam away. If you're not, then um, we'll just play that a couple of times. So we're going to get a count of four in. Two, three, four. So we go down from seven. some of these notes okay Oh, 
I'll shut up so you can just carry on, okay? How's that, guys? Is that? Is any questions? No questions. Okay. Right. Um, the next scale we can use is the Mixolydian scale, and that's basically this is a mode. I don't know how much how much you know, guys, know about sort of music theory. I'm not going to make it too much theory at all. Um, a mode is when we just play as. Uh, the notes of a major scale and we start on a different note so if our harmonica is based on a C scale I'm sure you can all play a C major scale uh, I'm just going to start that scale from G and blow three carry on called the Mixolydian scale um, and I know probably some of you play diatonic harmonica that's basically what you do when you play second position on the diatonic harmonica is you play and start with a Mixolydian scale so if you try to plan that up and down again that up and down um, and then we're going to talk about some tricks with the slide and then do a tune so I'll just put that up again so that's this scale, and it's so it's really easy. It's just blows so like you don't have to use the slide at all. We're not, we haven't got any of the bluesy notes really, apart from what we call the flat and seventh. Um, so if you haven't got that B flat or that C sharp here, we haven't got those notes in the scale. But um, so it's going to sound less bluesy, but it does work, you know. So if I put that on again, try playing that. Stop. That's a good place to stop. Um, okay. Any questions on that? Can't see anyone. No. Okay. Um, so this is why sort of playing blues in G on the C chromatic is quite easy because you can use the C scale, go up and down. But if we want some of the bluesy notes, we want to use the slide. And this is so. I think um, something I would do a lot. Let's put this note in. So if we just stick to the third hole, suck, release the slide, blow. Because that B flat is a really bluesy note, it's the flat of the third. So 
that's something on the side I would do a lot. I'm the equivalent of uh, four holes up. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing, same pattern, starting on the blow seven. So if I did the mix in scale and start with some of these B flats in, it makes it much bluesier. So that's how to take your sort of basic scale on, on, on harmonica and blues it up. And the other thing you can do, you can do the same with this note. Um, so blow the five, push the slide in. This gives us this C sharp, D flat. It's another really bluesy note. That's the equivalent of bending four on a C diatonic. Okay, so if you're playing up and down, just mess around and So one of the things, a little lick I do a lot, and this is really useful because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be useful in a different key, is I would do suck three with the slide in. I'd do suck, take, uh, keep breathing, take slide out. So suck three, slide in, suck three, slide up. Blow three, blow two, back to three. Do the same thing up four holes, so on seven. It sounds quite like no tricky and fancy, but it's it's actually it's just moving around. I'm just using the slide on one hole. So suck three, slide in. Suck three, blow. Blow the two, up the three again. Because often, you know, if you're playing in the key of G, we might want to resolve, come back to G's. Okay, so. Putting that little trick in, which makes it sound nice, you know. So, my go. slide on the five. So on the whole, on the whole three or the seven or 
what the 11 we're just talking about 12 hole uh chromatic and then on the c's because that's a really bluesy note so um and the other scale that i'm a big fan of um that i think is sometimes underused by harmonica players is the major pentatonic okay so this hasn't got any of the bluesy sounds in it but it is a really good scale it's great on the diatonic as well and it's really useful for i think you know country blues jazz but um if I, what i tend to do is play it use it a lot and then put some put this b flat in to give it to blues it up a bit so <laughs> Major sound, and it's not it's not bluesy bluesy like the blues scale. Um, it's got a bit more jazzy sound, I think. So that's me doing that, putting that little trick in on the whole three. So this depends what sort of sound you want, but I think what's really cool on the blues is sort of go from a major sound and then then really, so you're sort of playing quite nice if you like, but then really blues it up and contrast it with some of the bends and the bluesy sound. So this might be major pentatonic. <laughs> Put some slides in. It's been about four hours on each of these. Okay. Um, yeah, all, the, all these scores I will send around. So um, I'll give the Sam so he can send them around to you. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to do a bit more on G. I'm going to do a song called St. Louis Blues. And then we're going to try and move to some other keys. Um, so... Uh, let me just play the piece, put the music up in a second. Um, this is song that's, that's great on the diatonic, it's easy on the chromatic, it sort of highlights some of the chord changes. Um, it's got loads of space for fills, it's a great tune. Um, much covered, copied, uh, Walter Horton puts it in one of uh, a couple of, he often quotes parts from it, doesn't do the whole tune, but... Um, it's a I'll do that again. easy um again if you need if you're a diatonic player try it on a diatonic um 
it's pretty it's it just sounds great and it's the way the the, the bends you work work in some of these slides it's really good so let me just put this up okay i don't know if any of you know this song already it has got um it's got three different parts to it actually it's got like a latin rhythm uh, rhythm change in the middle we're not going to do that today but it is on the tab it's on this bit I'm going to leave just because that's a bit tricky to do today. But yeah, so this is the tune. Okay. Um, hopefully, I'm not rushing fast too too quickly through this uh, I just want to do look at a couple of more keys and know we're sort of halfway through already but um, yeah you'll have time to practice it later on okay um, this is good because it sort of highlights the fact that when you change chord you play the B flat not the B and this is you know people who come to my lessons know that I moan at diatonic players a lot when they play the straight draw three over what we call the four chord so I've highlighted the chord so this shows you this these are notes of G chord. I don't want to get too much into theory now, but it, it's, it, the melody works really nicely. Um it's this B flat. If you played, if you didn't play flatten that, it would sound a bit dodgy over that chord. Um you sort of play E, G, and A there for the C chord, you've got the B flat again. B would really clash with this note. And then here you play the notes of the chord, what we call an arpeggio. F sharp A, F sharp D. Um, if I play it again, then I'll put us back in track on. You can try it, and then we'll talk about some of the fills you can put in. Um, so it's. So that's the first bit. It lays really well out. It lays out really well on the classic. Second line. And then what we're going to, when we repeat, you've got this little bend, um, not a bend, a slide on the dial tone could be a bend, which sort of leads you into this note. So here we've used the slide on draw two with the F sharp. That's not in any of the scales I've showed you, but it works on this chord because it's notes from that chord. So, um, yeah, I'll play it and then we'll see if we can put it. I'm going to see if there's any volunteers to play this in a minute. Mike, I can see you there. You might want to volunteer. All right, we'll see. Okay. Um, if this is too quick, we can slow it down. I'll tell you what, I'll take that down to 10 beats or something. Two, three. Hit it. 
hell. some fills in these long gaps here. Any volunteers to play that? No. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Um, just because we have loads of time, we could spend more, loads more time on that, obviously. I'm going to change key to the key of E. Okay. Which, if you play an E major on a chromatic, it's um, tricky, perhaps, because you've got lots of... Lots of changes of breath direction, lots of slide work. Because uh, I'm messing it up. If you play blues, you want to play the blues scale, it's very, very similar to playing in G. And if you have that little trick we did earlier, you can do it the same key. So, so um, I'm going to show you a great little tune called, um, what's it called? Bag's Groove, which I've written out in quite a few different keys. Um, in A and G um, and E and it just sort of uses the blues scale um, hopefully it's uh, quite easy to play and then um, we'll just look at, some, look at some of this uh, playing blues and E Okay, so E, we've got four sharps. You've got C sharp, uh, F sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Um, but for blues, we don't need to play them. We can play lots of sort of natural notes if you like. So this, this tune, like um, Blues Backstage, has just got a repeating riff. It's going to go. So that's it, and it just sort of uses the minor pentatonic scale, which is very similar to the blues scale. 
Um, you give me you give me a count of three. A one, two, three. Ba, ba, da, 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 da. Diatonic players, it's very easy to play as well. It's good. Um, I put the same backing track as I did before. Um, speed it up a little bit. Hopefully that's, we'll go back over that in a second. Um, hopefully that's fairly straightforward. I hope. Okay. Um, I'm just going to show you um, scales for losing E. Okay. Can you see the scales of blues E? Your thumbs up if that's okay. No? Okay. Never know with Zoom with you sharing the right thing or not okay um so this is the reason i did g and then the key of g and the key of e because g major and e minor which we sort of affected the blue scale pretty much use the same notes so we can do that trick on the whole three again okay we can use most of the notes the notes we want to avoid in this key are f's okay C's as well to a certain extent. So F and C we want to avoid because we're in the key of E. So we play it in the F's. Not good. If you find yourself on that note, put slide or blow. Or C. Doesn't be worth Push the slide in. But I can play. this note. You're coming down back to a blow two or a blow five. Scale. 
mixolydian. Okay, stop there. So. And also the major pentatonic. So I, I think actually, particularly if you just do the blues scale, blues and E is quite easy to do. It's not necessarily one you think would be easy on the C chromatic, but if you, that's that scale, it's dead easy, all the way up and down. Because I find it very uh, similar to playing in G, which I think is quite intuitive on C chromatic. It's to me it makes sense. It's quite easy to find my way around. Okay, so um, and that draw three slide in, draw seven slide in, draw eleven slide in to get that bluesy. Okay, so sometimes when you're playing blues, you're looking to highlight those blues, you know, to give you that really bluesy sound, and perhaps you want to do a four. And then hit that, because that's going to give you your flattened five. You're highlighting the bluesy notes, which makes it sound blues. Let's a different We can play something with a more sort of Chicago blues feel. Another little lick you can do in this key is you got this. So if you do the draw three, then you draw three with a slide in, then you're up to the draw four, up to the draw five. Because they're basically it's these four notes. Because they're all draw, you can play that quite quickly. And I'd perhaps end on a blow six, which is our E, or perhaps a blow two, which is another E. So you sort of go up, and then those. Two. Same thing, so higher. Okay, and if you're a bit more comfortable, you know, using the slide, you can. Use this major pentatonic or the major. This is a mixture of the major and the minor pentatonic, so which is I like to do. So play major, then chuck some bluesy notes in. And um, you can go blow three, slide in, back to the E. That gives you a minor third, major third. So 
So that's that's another little trick. You use the blow three, uh, blow three with slide in. So you've got a major minor third, and then go down to the two or up to the five. So same track. <laughs> So basically, I'm mixing up. This is a really good thing to do. Mix up the major sound, put some minor notes in that, that contrast. And sometimes it gives you nice little tricks you can do with the slide. Because obviously, certain keys have advantages in about playing. You can play lots of holes in one breath, either blow or suck. Um, or you can use the tricks of the slide. It's, it depends, doesn't it? So. Blow two down to the. So what I would do is just get back in tracks, try these different scales, then try sort of mixing them up and doing some of the in some of the bluesy bends. I think it looks like Joff has um frozen we'll give, give him a minute to uh, see if he gets back yeah it's frozen frozen in time what what key is that in uh unfortunately i can't sc scroll up the screen i was trying <laughs> um wasn't this one the key of e yeah it was in key of e yeah Oh, I think he may have left. Oh. Anyone know any good jokes until he gets back in? <laughs> my <laughs> my mother-in-law was not a bad woman, but the mice used to throw themselves on the traps when she came round. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can beat that, can we, anybody? Anyone got a better joke? <laughs> there must be a joke about harmonica players and how many it takes, but I don't know how it ends. <laughs> oh. I'm going to text him. You've got everyone thinking now, Peter. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure he'll try, and, um, he'll try and rejoin. Oh, he's in the waiting room. There we go. See, we passed time fine there. Admit. Sorry about the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, it's good. Um, I'm going to throw you all back on mute. There we go. Where? Where's... He's in the room. Ah, oh. sorry about that. I just got kicked out. So... No, no, it's all right. We 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 were sharing uh, we were sharing jokes, and they 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 went about you, Joff. Don't worry. It's okay. About mother-in-law and uh, how right. many harmonica players does it take to do something? Which. <laughs> so off you go again. <laughs> uh, okay, um, blues in F, which I think is a great play. Great key on the chromatic um, because you can use the slide loads. I'm just going to put a little scale. I think we've got a few minutes. Um, yeah, you always think there's going to be loads of time, and then there isn't. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so this is the same tune as before, but just in F, and, and there's loads of the slides. So, I um, mean, you can play this all with the slide in, actually. You, don't, you could do that as a blow with the slide in, but I've put this um, um, as a, just a straight F. So. Try higher. Hopefully, that's fairly straightforward. Um, maybe not if you've never seen it before, but um, just try playing it all pretty much all with the slide in. F's, F's a really great key on the chromatic game, actually. I think it just works really well. So um, these are the scales that would go. I don't know if you can see the scales. Can you see the scales? Yes, you can. OK. So that blue, the blue scale is basically the same sort of as the riff we just played, the blue um, bag screw. The other thing is good about F is you've got choice of whether you want to play the F as a blow or a suck, and the C is whether you want to play it as a blow or a suck, and they're both obviously been the root notes or the fifth, they're the most important notes in the scale. So um, that could be played as a suck four with a slide in, or a blow four, or a blow five, or the equivalent in the next octave, the F could be suck two or blow two with a slide in. So it depends what you're playing if you're improvising. Um, so if, I know we haven't got much time left, but perhaps we can have just a quick jam in the key of F. Is that all right, Sam? Can you give them a, that okay? Yeah, of course, no problem. Yeah. Um, because I just think it's really worth um, jamming with people on the chromatic trying this. I did have a couple of tunes in F, but we're not different tunes, but we're not going to get around to doing them. So, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> So I messed it up. We're going to go down. And up this blue scale again. So you could do some great trills on the threes and actually blow in and end up on a blow two or a suck two, but I tend to end up on a blow two and slide in. Um, 
You can trill on the suck as well. And then up to the four. The end, if you just do a suck four in the trill, end on the suck with a slide in, so end on the C. the other scales as well which actually in this are really easy really um in f you're going to use a slide in on the whole three for that b flat and then a draw um, the e flat on the, for the flat and seven but. This is quite a jazzy back in the track, which suits that sort of those flicks on playing. So if you try this major pentatonic. Drills on the whole threes and into that. Okay. Well, um, well, that went incredibly quickly, really. <laughs> I told you it would. <laughs> yeah. Um. I know I rushed through lots actually, but probably should have took more, taken more time. But um... no, well, we've got this resource as a, as a, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think Yoss has mentioned about playing St. Louis blues. Um, is that is is that something is that something you'd like to do, um, Yoss? Well, there was there was mainly to fill the gap when uh, uh, when Jock was. Uh, uh... Oh. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. But if right. you, if you well, I, I I'm quite better with the with the diatonic. I can play I, the diatonic if you like. But no, no, so it's okay. I I I didn't realise that you, you. That's why you um when you wrote it. I've only just seen it now. So um we we won't force you to play. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Josh. Uh, Josh, I'm talking about <laughs> take two. Thank you so much, Joff. That was, as, as a diatonic player as well, it's a really, really interesting session. And I think the first thing for me is the is the way the chromatic sounds, uh, uh, in sort of a blues, you know, played in a in a blues blues way, um, because you know, obviously with the diatonic, you were very um, used to hearing the Chicago sound or yeah. you know, like a, a more acoustic-y sounds. So I think that's the first thing I, you know, I'd like to say. You should really enjoy the the, the sort of the, the sound of the chromatic uh, for playing blues. Um, and, and the other thing as well is, I mean, um, with the chromatic, you tend to think more of classical and jazz. In that's making yeah. a generalisation. But what I can see here is it's really the fact that you've got certainly with blues, you can play play the same riff over each set of four bars. Yeah. So to learn um, all the you know, playing in the different positions, um, minor, major scales, all that business, I can see that that is really um, that'd be a really good sort of um, practice um, to to 
used to, to uh, so you can uh, work your way around the the different keys. Um, yeah. And and the other thing as well, the last thing I was going to say was it's it's interesting when you say about mixing up major and minor. Yeah. Um, because obviously on the diatonic you can ch cheat a little bit on that whole three, can't you? So yeah. you can sort of switch it up as you like. Whereas with yeah. diatonic, you've got to have um definite definite notes, pretty much, haven't you? Yeah. I, I guess there's in some keys you'd be able to do the slide between major and minor. Yeah, um, that, I'm not. I think that's to me playing blues. Is that's one of the key things, isn't it? Sort of get that contrast between. You don't want to play sort of major pentatonic all the time or blues scale all the time. It's about you know, getting that tension between the both, isn't it? And yeah. also you can bend on the chromatic a little bit. I mean, I didn't talk about that at all, but it's nice to put some bends in, I think. Yeah, I've, I've heard that a few times, but, you know, people doing that, and it's, it's I think it's it's a great effect. Um, yeah. But again, I guess it, it depends which key you're playing in as well, which, which note of the scale yeah. you can then bend. But you can bend all the notes on a chromatic, which is nice, but obviously not to the, anywhere near the same extent you can on a, on a diatonic. No, but it's you don't necessarily want to bend to a particular note, do you? Just a little no, bit. No, you, you do it more more for the for the effects rather than yeah. You don't need to do it as you do on a diatonic to get those notes. So okay, 